Batman titles. Um, a little heftier than it was supposed to be this week, but we'll get into what's in this bag in just a minute. I just really quick want to call it a member of our YouTube community. He's got about 30 some subscribers. I've been watching him for a few weeks now, and I just wanted to give him a quick shout out. Make sure you guys get over to his channel and check out what he's got going on. And that is Polist Examiner. Uh, I think he does a really great weekly video where he basically talks about his top three books that he's picking up for the week. He talks about what it is he likes about the books, what it is he's anticipating. A lot of fun little opinions and a nice sort of compact bite-sized video. Uh, it's impressive to see someone who can be like, these are the top three and just kind of let it sit at that. So uh, I'm really liking his content and I haven't done a Monday review for him because... I only found him a few weeks ago, and he's talking about weekly books. So it'll be a little while before there's like a trade paperback that I can shout him out with. So that's why I'm calling him out here today. And it was a perfect opportunity because he actually called out two Batman books, both of which I picked up this week. So yeah, what can I say? He likes Batman. I like Batman. Great minds think alike. So getting into the books I picked up this week. So getting into the books I picked up this week. So getting into the books I picked up this week, um, normally the first week of the month is kind of a lighter week. You always have, you know, the main Batman title, which is obviously a heavy hitter, but then there's not a whole lot of supporting material to go with it. This week there was kind of a lot. Uh, the only book I did not pick up was Earth Prime number one featuring Batwoman, uh, just because it ties into like the CW universe. I've actually got a fair number of those seasons, but like I literally i am through the first three seasons of Arrow, and I've watched one season of The Flash, half a season of Legends of Tomorrow, uh, and that's just kind of where I'm at. I'm never going to get around to watching all that TV, especially when I have things like the 365 movie challenge going on, so uh, yeah, I just, that was a hard pass for me. I didn't even consider picking it up. Of the 10 DC books, five of them were Batman related, and inside here are the remaining four. So, first up, of course, I picked up Batman 122. This is part two of Shadow War. Uh, I absolutely loved Shadow War Alpha, an amazing kickoff to this crossover event, so I'm really excited to give this a read. And don't just take my word for it. Every single person that I've seen on YouTube talking about Shadow War has said that it's been a solid kickoff. And while we're talking about Batman 122, I also got a variant this week, which I almost never do, but I really liked the reflective jock cover. Uh, circumstances showed this off in his Monday video and I was like oh that's actually pretty cool and my comic book shop never has these out and they did for this one and so for 10 bucks I was like let's splurge I'm in a really good mood I can't remember what the ratio for this cover was I thought it was 1 in 50 but I feel like it should have been more than $10 if that was the case so maybe let me know down in the comments or I'll go back and review circumstances video just to clarify that another book I picked up that was completely unnecessary was uh, Batman Night of Vengeance number one. Uh, this is a reprint of the three issue miniseries done in perfect binding for only $6.99 which is great. You get all three issues in this. It even reprints the covers for all three issues and um, you know I've got this in singles. I picked it up at the time. I've got the Flashpoint Omnibus upstairs that I've been meaning to go through and do like a full reread on at some point. God knows when I'm going to get to it. Um, so this is now the third set of this that I have, but I thought it would be nice to just have convenient uh, to be able to sit down and read it. And I feel like it'll go nicely with Flashpoint Beyond if I end up picking that up. $6.99 for the three issues together is a pretty darn good deal in perfect binding, nice convenient packaging. So um, DC doesn't do nice things very often, so I like to call it out when they do. All right, continuing with some of the weirder pickups, I did grab Monkey Prince number three. Um, when issue two came out, I picked up one and two together. I think I reviewed those on This Week in Batman. Uh, this obviously is not Batman, but it's Batman adjacent because it takes place in Gotham. The Monkey Prince goes to the high school that Damian Wayne goes to, and so they're heavily featured, as you can see on the cover. Um, so I decided to roll it into This Week in Batman just because I had so much fun reading the first two issues. So I'm excited to give this third one a read. All right, and then the last two books I picked up, which are very much in the typical Batman wheelhouse, we have Batman Killing Time. This is issue two of six, uh, written by Tom King. I enjoyed the first issue, although it was a little bit all over the place. Uh, hoping with issue two, we start to see kind of where Tom King is going. Uh, but knowing Tom King, you know, he likes to be obtuse for as long as possible. So I guess we'll see when I read it. And then finally, the book I was actually probably the most excited for 
but at the same time kind of know the least about um, is Batman Beyond Neo Year number one. So I've never really dabbled in the Batman Beyond comics. I know in the past couple of ongoing series, uh, there's been a lot of crazy stuff that's happened and I am almost completely in the dark. Um, but I read Batman Urban Legends number seven, which heavily featured Batman Beyond. It was on the cover and there was like an AI inside of the back computer that basically killed Bruce Wayne and is trying to reinvent Gotham City with Batman completely free of it. And Terry McGinnis has to like basically go analog to combat this AI in the future. And that's where this book is picking up. A really promising start. That book came out like, gosh, four or five months ago, something like that. I can't remember what issue of Urban Legends we're on now, but um, the book came out a long time ago and I'd almost forgotten that it was going to be an ongoing. So I'm really excited to give this one a read. Hoping it's an okay jumping on point because my familiarity with Batman Beyond really doesn't extend beyond the TV show. And even at that, I haven't even seen every episode of Batman Beyond, to be honest. So as promised, a pretty healthy stack of books to review for you guys this week. I'm going to give them a read. I'm going to put them in order from least favorite to most favorite and let you guys know what happened this week. <laughs> All right, so I've read the four books. I've got them in order from least favorite to most favorite, but I'm gonna be straight with you guys. It was another great week in Batman. I may be starting to sound like a broken record because they've really been on a hot streak lately, but I mean, literally all four of these books, I had a lot of fun reading. Uh, there was a clear least favorite, but even that one, like I really liked. So um, just understand that, you know, even the bottom of the barrel books this week are not bottom of the barrel, probably worth your time if you're interested. So kicking things off, we're going to go with Batman Killing Time by Tom King. Um, this was my least favorite book of the week because it just is jumping around too much. So you've got a story about King Pentheus, who's like the King of Thebes, that is being torn apart by his family and his followers um, after being caught spying on them, uh, like literally torn limb from limb. You've got Batman investigating this jewel heist that the Riddler and Catwoman perpetrated in the first issue. You have got a subplot with Clayface's girlfriend and Clayface himself, who was kind of like a patsy for this whole robbery as it took place. You have a clandestine meeting between Catwoman and the Joker from sometime the year before, uh, which feels a little bit out of character for at least the way Tom King has written the Joker in the past. But I will say, you know, this is much earlier in the timeline, so I would be, you know, more than willing to grant him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Um, but all of these stories are being told forwards and backwards and all on top of each other. And it's just, like, muddled and convoluted. Every single segment is interesting and I'm intrigued about what's going on and you're just jumping around a little too much because you can't really sit down and absorb. You're too busy thinking about this book as like a puzzle box and I mean that's okay. It better have a good payoff though and as much as people like Tom King while I found his Batman run interesting there was an element of like Damon Lindelof where you know there's just a lot of stuff kind of thrown in to throw you for a loop kind of for shock value or for surprise value that never quite culminated in a meaningful way and I'm a little worried that this book is going to do that so that's why it's on the bottom of my list it does have good art it's well written the plot is intriguing it's just the structure of the storytelling in this where I see what he's trying to go for he's definitely like riding a line of like you know what people are willing to tolerate for me I think he's just going a little bit beyond it now, the other three books are, I mean, literally basically tied, but I'm going to go with Batman Neo Year next. Uh, this was a great read. The two that beat it out primarily probably came from the artwork, which isn't to say that I didn't like the artwork in this. It just didn't blow me away in the way that one book in particular did this week. And then the other reason I knocked it down a notch was because I didn't feel like it did the best job kind of reintroducing the premise from Batman Urban Legends. And we kind of went off on a different tangent than what I was expecting. Which isn't to say that I didn't like it, because the characters they introduced in here were interesting. We have a new villain called the Holographic Man, who I think is a promising foe for Terry McGinnis. I'm not sure if this guy is literally that AI or not. I was just a little bit confused. Or if maybe he's possessed by the AI, or is it the AI involved right now at all? <laughs> I'm actually not quite sure. If you're a fan of uh, Batman Beyond, 
I think you'll enjoy it, probably, although, um, of the few things that I know about the Batman Beyond storyline up to this point in the comics, I'm not sure that this is lining up correctly, so maybe you guys who are super familiar with Batman Beyond, you can let me know down in the comments. I thought there was, like, a Batgirl now, and, like, a couple other things that are just kind of, just not in this. Maybe they'll come up in the future, maybe not, I'm not really sure. All in all, you know, promising new villain. Uh, hopefully we'll develop into something more, but it's only issue one, so it's really hard to fall one way or the other on it. You've got Barbara Gordon retiring from being the police commissioner, and you've got Terry McGinnis trying to do things in a more analog way, although I didn't feel like they completely lived up to that concept, because of course he is still very tech-heavy. I don't know how you completely separate Terry McGinnis from the tech, though, so strong opening issue. Um, I would definitely recommend giving Batman Beyond Neo Year a chance, and it was an okay hopping on point, so go check it out. Okay, so my runner-up comic book of the week does have my favorite art, but there were a couple things that just held it back a little bit on the story that prevented it from being my number one, um, but that is going to go to Batman 122, Chapter 2 of Shadow War. I thought that this did live up to the expectation of the promise that was Shadow War Alpha. Uh, one of the concerns I had after reading that was... You know, that might be a little too good of an issue for something that's going to just be everyone kind of getting their gun off with just giant battles. But they don't actually dwell on that too much here. Uh, we kind of reel things in because we're following Batman in this, who is really a supporting character in this story more than like the main character. Now to get the elephant in the room out of the way first, um, the art in this is by Howard Porter. And I'm not sure how people are going to feel about this. I really like Howard Porter's art a lot. Um, I've enjoyed his work from the 90s onward. And as he gets older, you know, his style has definitely evolved. It still feels distinctly Howard Porter-like, but it's just a little bit busier, a little bit more obtuse, but in a way that I think, you know, has aged like a fine wine, um, as opposed to like a John Romita Jr., who for me is kind of devolved as an artist. I think Howard Porter is doing some of his best work. But, um, you know, I mean, if you looked at this page that I'm showing you right now and are like, what's even happening here? <laughs> I I would sympathize with you. It's something I normally complain about. Maybe it's just from my past love of Howard Porter. I don't know. Batman in this goes to Nepal to confront Talia. And, I mean, the Batwing there, Batman taking out this member of the League of Assassins. I mean, I don't know. I think it's awesome. And the fight continues on the next page, actually, with him with the sigh in his hand. I mean... Come on. The only thing holding this book back, as I said, was the story, just by a little bit. And really it comes from the fact that, you know, Batman is investigating who killed Ra's al Ghul. And he kind of comes to the conclusion that it must have been Talia. And he basically accuses her of having, you know, Deathstroke kill her father. And I kind of had two problems with that. First of all, you know, it's made very clear in Alpha that this is not Deathstroke. He's wearing this old style Deathstroke armor. And that's just not something that Batman wouldn't have noticed, I feel like. And, you know, certainly sometimes, you know, the writers take liberties where Batman knows too much or knows everything. He's always one step ahead. But this is one circumstance where I just feel like it, it's natural to assume that Batman would have understood that something else was going on there, especially once he started investigating the footage. She's like, well, that was mean of you to say. And then he's like, oh yeah, I'm really sorry about that. And then he's, you know, has his like romantic moment with Talia, which also felt a little bit like forced. But nevertheless, I am enjoying the ride on this and can't wait to check out Deathstroke Inc. number eight. I meant to go back and pick up Deathstroke Inc. number seven and forgot to do it today. I'll have to remember to do that hopefully next week because uh, supposedly that has a little bit of lead in to the Shadow War that I would like to circle back and grab. Now, of course, as a $4.99 book, this does have a backup story in it featuring Batman and Robin. Uh, presumably, this is Dick Grayson uh, from yesteryear in an early confrontation with Deathstroke, which unfortunately kind of reinforced my point that he should have recognized that something was off about the Deathstroke that killed Ra's al Ghul, but I digress. And basically, this is Deathstroke trying to kill Robin, potentially at the behest of the Joker, uh, which we find out at the end of the issue that Deathstroke is high on laughing gas. Um, all in all, this kind of feels like filler to me. It didn't really add anything. I'm curious to see if it's going to actually tie back into Shadow War, or if it's truly just a Deathstroke-themed backup story just for the sake of it. I guess we'll find out next month. All right, so that brings us to the pick of the week, which is the Batman-adjacent book, Monkey Prince. Um, really enjoyed the first two issues of this and was excited to see issue three 
pretty much live up to everything I enjoyed about the first two issues. This book is just creative. It's funny. It's exciting. Um, you know, he's different than any other superhero we've seen. You know, you're bringing in Chinese culture into the DC universe in a way that I think is really compelling. Um, I never read the new Superman or whatever it was called, like the Chinese Superman, but I never was just interested in checking it out because you're sort of grafting Chinese culture on an American symbol. And you can certainly do that. Like there's nothing really wrong with that. But to me, this is way more compelling because you just get something. And I mean, look at this right there. That How great is that? But you just get something that's uninhibited. It doesn't have any baggage. It's a fresh character. And wouldn't you know it, you, know, you have this great sort of quasi-iconic DC character. I have every confidence that if Batman Brave and the Bold was still a cartoon, this character would have been in it. And this book would take off the way like Blue Beetle took off when he was featured on that show. Like it really is that good. So if you're not picking up Monkey Prince, I absolutely recommend checking it out. In this issue, the Monkey Prince is learning that when he becomes fearful, he loses his powers. And while he manages to maintain his composure throughout most of the book, even when he's fighting Robin uh, to recover the brother of the girl he has a crush on, uh, the moment where he loses his powers is actually when the girl of his dreams is about to give him a kiss, which I thought was just a perfect little teenage moment. Monkey Prince ends up with more missing appendages in this. In this case, Robin cuts his arm off, <laughs> which was kind of a great moment too. And the big conclusion wraps up with Penguin, who's possessed by a Chinese demon, kidnapping his parents, and Monkey Prince has to go after him. Uh, the one thing that makes me sad is, I think this is only four issues, so only one issue to go. It feels like there's so much more here uh, to build off of. I'm hoping it gets an issue five or at least another mini series in the near future. This is exactly the kind of off the wall, crazy superhero storytelling that I love to get in comic books. So they got to keep this coming. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's reviews. All four Batman books are definitely recommend worthy this week from me. And on top of it, DC's offering a really great deal on this Batman Night of Vengeance comic book. So if you never got a chance to pick this up, go check it out. I hope you guys have a great week in comics. Thanks for watching this video and finding out what happened this week in Batman with me. Take care.